Sánchez. coming out psyched as I was driving here passed by this billboard it's down the road a little bit for Jurassic Park the ride at Universal Studios I don't know if you guys have seen that it says Jurassic Park the ride now wetter than ever <laughs> drove by that sign I was thinking Man, I want to fuck that ride. <laughs> so I knew it was going to be a good night. First joke down. First joke down. <laughs> so you guys want to come in? Let's go. Let me look stupid. It's called an acapella running man. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um. <clears throat> was shopping the other day down at that uh, fancy mall, welcome, fancy mall <laughs> down uh, in Santa Monica. I don't know if you guys have been there, it's kind of new. It's at the end of the uh, outside mall. It replaced the older mall. It's actually on top of a newer mall they're building underground. <clears throat> For the apocalypse. So that when the end of days happens, we can shop at Hot Topics and Aeropostale. <laughs> Anyways, it's a cool mall. It's got a lot of everything. And uh, they actually have like a dance club at the mall, which is awesome. Because I walked by, I was there at like Tuesday, 3 p.m. I walked by this darkly lit place with music pumping. I was like, mm, mm, mm. I'm like, fuck it. I deserve this. I needed a break. <laughs> I walk in, somebody like, greets me with a drink, complimentary beverage. I was like, yeah. <laughs> See people kind of grooving, kind of moving to the music, you know, dark lit, it's nice. And then I started to notice some of the photographs on the wall, some of the artwork, was pretty provocative of different men and women, mostly men, mostly men, kind of scantily clad, <laughs> various poses. Got a little suspicious, but you know, <laughs> so I was dancing. And then this guy comes up to me, puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Welcome to Abercrombie and Fitch. How may I help you? That is a fucking gay rave, that place. I was looking in the jean section in the corner and there was a dick through the wall. There was a, there was a fucking glory hole in the 3432s. I kept walking and I turned the corner of the other, the other section. I saw a mannequin just like this. And then I kept walking and I noticed he was jerking off another mannequin. <laughs> Mannequins weren't looking at each other. That's what dis disturbed me the most. It wasn't intimate. It was crazy. I went for a sweater and I left with 10 pills of ecstasy. It was cool though. <laughs> the promenade's fun. All the bike cops on the promenade. That's the best. These bike cops just, you know, dressed in pleated khaki shorts, tight-fitting shirts, riding atop matching Schwinn bicycles. Are we supposed to respect and fear these guys? Looks like their mothers dressed them before, you know, the first day of third grade, got them ready for school. Hey, Skippy, got your uniform for you just like you like it on your bed, all pressed and nicely laid out. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> But it's Officer Skippy, we went over there. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Officer Skippy, I'm so proud. I even shine your little badge and put your belt through the belt loops like you like it. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> oh, remember, Skippy, it's wear your helmet, it's the law. I know, Mom. I'm a police officer, remember? <laughs> I enforce the law. <laughs> now, if you will excuse me, I'm going to catch some bad guys. <laughs> Bye, Mom. Every time, 
Anytime I see those guys like riding down the street in groups of like three or four in formation, I always, I always get the, I always feel like they're gonna break out into some sort of like rock musical at any moment. Just like, fum, 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 we patrol the streets for drugs and crime. We can adjust our seats at the drop of a dime. We're bike cops. Whoa, we didn't do too well on a police exam, but we can pop a wheelie and ride with no hand. We're bike cops. Whoa. If you run from us, we'll just pedal faster. If you hop in a car, well, then you're a bastard, and we'll get you eventually. <laughs> We're bike cops! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Right. Fuck yeah! Never done that joke with a band before. <laughs> Got a little excited. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe they have the right idea, because fucking driving sucks. Like, good transition, huh? <laughs> this guy knows. <clears throat> no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe ride a bike everywhere. I was like, driving fucking is so annoying. I was uh, at a stoplight the other day, second in line, first person in front of me red light, where that person's only job is to watch that light turn green and then go when the light turns fucking green. I always get behind the person who has decided to do everything in their life during that red light. It's like, well, I gotta, gotta send Margaret a text because she needs the sizes for that dress. So that's, oh, you know what? I forgot to set my presets on my radio. <laughs> Soft rock should be before slow jams, cause yeah, cause I go to work in the morning. I like soft rock in the morning. <laughs> when I get off work, I like slow jam. Oh, sorry, somebody beep. Like that's what the fucking horn is for. I love the horn because it's just very direct. Bam! You cut out all the bullshit. A well placed honk. I've started to use the horn in my non-car life. <laughs> like I had to go inside a bank the other day which was bullshit in and of itself. I was standing in line and the person in front of me didn't see that teller number six was open. So rather than have that kind of awkward exchange, I just went, ha! And she was like, thank oh, that's good, sorry. It worked. I'll try it. I gotta mix it up. Driving get boring too. A little fun thing you can do while you're driving on the freeway. Another thing that happens when you're driving and somebody p passes you on the left because maybe you're going too slow, he passes by you at like 80 miles an hour giving that disapproving look like... <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> everybody, everybody does it too, that's the thing. You can't really help it. I don't want to... Mm. <laughs> so next time, next time you feel that happening, feel the person coming up on your left, just put both hands on the wheel and go... Ah! I'm like, that's a monster. I just cut off a monster. I just cut off a monster on the 405. <laughs> and that like ruins that person's whole day. That actually works too if you ever fly southwest and you're sitting while people are boarding. You don't want anybody to sit next to you. Just be in your magazine. Every once in a while, just like, ah! First be like, I'm, no, I'm not sitting in 7B. Honey, let's go to 12B. <laughs> get the whole row, you'll get the whole row. <sighs> um, I kinda wanna share something with you. You guys ever get those, like a, uh, a voicemail or a wrong, that's a wrong number, somebody leaves a voicemail that just was not meant for you? <laughs> but it's a really long, involved voicemail? No? Good night, everybody. Thank you. No, I, uh, I got one a while ago, and I saved it. Because, and I, I haven't done this that many times, but it's just, come on, guys. It's just too brilliant. And, uh, oh, it goes in that way. Okay. I'm going to put this in my pocket for a second. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Scout. She has fucking man hands. That thing is... <laughs> Um, this is 
is my old phone, by the way. I got an iPhone, so don't judge, okay? <laughs> don't judge this. My friends used to call this a high school phone because, like, it was kind of cool. You know, it's cool with the business partners. Like, yeah, no, I got to send that to my boss because there's a big meeting tomorrow. And then, like, you know what? Like, my boss is such a dick. Like, this is, like, I can't believe he could. Anyways. Um, okay, so I got this uh, voicemail, and I'm just going to I'm just gonna play it without context because it's fun. Okay, so it was, uh, this is from the Chinese Chicken Company <laughs> that I applied to. I mean, it may have been when I was fucking wasted. And my friends didn't stop me. I'm like, dude, I'm doing it. I'm calling the Chinese. Don't do it, bro. Don't do it. Fuck you! But then it turns, she kind of like bails a little bit because it's Chinese Chicken Company. And then it's, then it, or no, she actually like, Sorry. Goes from a Chinese chicken company to a Chinese chicken development society. <laughs> where there's like governors in the fucking like embassies and shit and like conglomerates. Okay. It goes on. Okay. How, what, how old are you? And what have you worked for yesterday? <laughs> and the past few days. And, and then it turns into, it goes back to a restaurant. She just, that's when she bails. She's like, it's a fucking company, a society, then a restaurant. <laughs> She's losing faith already in herself. <laughs> I think she senses that she got the wrong number. This is the best part, though. Hold on. She's about to leave the number where I could reach her. Five, eight, seven. In the Chinese chicken world, you only need nine numbers. That's what's crazy about the Chinese chicken development societies. Don't think I didn't call that number like 17 times. <laughs> I put it into Google and I have like t after the 20 times, it's like, fucking stop. Anyways. I'm never going to lose this. I'm keeping my old phone because of that. Thank you for going that with me. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I, uh, a while ago, I took an acting class because... Um, trying to look for a new way to waste five hundred dollars and uh, <laughs> the teacher the teacher had a study an animal for our character work see how an animal moves and sounds you know for our character work. apparently Robert De Niro does this before his films so you know it's legit so I guess uh, for Cape Fear he studied a raving lunatic bird or something <laughs> Good fella is like a dolphin. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, I chose a tiger for mine. We were doing a scene from an NYPD Blue episode, <laughs> and I was playing a real kind of dick, like Wall Street guy who was accused of killing his wife. So I thought, like, you know, a tiger would work. So, anyways, I go to the LA Zoo in uh, mid-August. I don't know if you guys have had the pleasure of going to the LA Zoo in the middle of the summer, but it is a horrible place to go. <laughs> Holy shit, it's 197 degrees in the shade. <laughs> the animals, are, well, at any zoo, really, the animals are really sick to be there, but they are fucking, if the animals all could talk, they'd just be going, it's so hot! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Get me out of here! Even the lions were like, it's fucking hot, and they're from Africa. The penguins would be like, what the fuck am I doing here, motherfucker? What? That's how penguins talk. 
I saw happy feet. <laughs> um, anyways, but when I so when I got to the tiger enclosure, I was expecting him to be just kind of lazing around, not doing shit. Because tigers always don't do shit. They're lazy creatures. But this guy was actually moving around. It was awesome. He was doing like his... So, of course, I was taking notes. <laughs> My character. <laughs> and, then it made, and then it growled. I, I had never heard a tiger growl before. Has anybody? It's not like a lion growling. It's not like the MGM lion. It's a fucking weird sound. It sounds like a cat. Have a seat. It sounds like <laughs> a cat, but like times a thousand. It's really strange. So, anyways, took notes on that, brought it back to my scene. Got in the scene, it was like with Sipowitz in the interrogation room. <coughs> and I remember my, my climactic line was, I'm not going to let her destroy everything I've worked for. I wasn't, no, I wasn't going to let her destroy everything I've worked for. So the scene was going, I was doing all this kind of, but keeping it inside, you know what I mean? Like keeping it all, it was getting heated between me and Sipowitz, you know, going back and forth. And then that moment came where I had to say my line, I was like, I wasn't going to let her destroy everything I've worked for. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> and scene. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, this is good. I passed that class. <laughs> <coughs> when I'm not, you know taking classes, doing comedy specials. <laughs> I'm, uh, I work part-time as a substitute for Los Angeles Unified School District. <laughs> yes. It's like my survivor job, my survival job, you know? And um, if you've seen some of the schools I've been to in South LA, it's a wonder I've survived. <laughs> <laughs> That's a racist joke. That's a very racist. It's my one racist joke for the night, so. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I mostly at this point do middle school. That's the joke. Good night, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> no, middle school, it's fucking, it's a crazy, crazy age. It's like, because they're not, they're not kids anymore, and they're not yet, you know, grown up, so they're learning how to become assholes. And I hate them. I hate them so much. They're so good at it. And they have so much energy, so much unchecked fucking energy. Like, I, I, don't think, I, I don't think I had that much energy when I was that age. I think parents are doing different things. There's different <laughs> techniques now. I think, like, instead of breakfast in the morning, parents are giving their kids cocaine. <laughs> because I'll be sitting in my classroom at 7.55, and I'll hear at the door, <laughs> so I go to open the door, and there's 25 fucking gacked out little people right in front of me, like, <laughs> The sub, sub, and the sub, it just travels down the line, and they're sweating. Like, why are you sweating? Because <sighs> I'm 12. And like, and then they get into like, what are we doing today? We're doing a lesson plan. <sighs> and to them, like, their fix is if we see a movie, you know, like, are we seeing a movie? No. Ah, and then they start to, <laughs> they start to, they start to bargain like crack addicts, like a scene out of like Boys in the Fucking Hood. They're like, oh, can we watch a movie? No. Ah. I'll let you have some of my hot Cheetos. No. Ah. I'll let you look at my sister's quinceanera pictures. No. It's LA Unified. So. I'll, let, uh, I'll suck it. No. Carlos. No. That's inappropriate. And kids that age, they're obsessed with height. Kids, remember that? Like, fucking, they love tall people. They're fucking obsessed with it because tall people are like mythical creatures to them. They're like <laughs> tall fucking unicorns. Like, they, because, like, boys especially, they see potential in it. Like, I maybe one day, one day. Literally every class I have with a new group of kids, it is the exact same exchange. I'll be standing at the doorway, and one by one, kids will just walk up to me. Like, oh, how tall are you, mister? 6'3". Ah. Oh. My cousin's 6'2". <laughs> How tall are you, mister? 6'3". Oh, my, my dad is 6'5", so maybe. 
How tall are you, mister? 6'3". Oh, my mom's seven feet tall. <laughs> Your mom's seven feet tall? Doesn't make sense. But it makes me feel powerful. Like, it makes me feel like standing in front of them like, you know, I'm this god, I'm this tall beast. Until one of them inevitably says, can you dunk? <laughs> no. No, I cannot dunk. And uh, most of the kids I teach in most of the classes are not white, you know? But what I've learned over the years teaching, I've learned one thing, is that they're racist. <laughs> they're all fucking racist because they all think that white people look alike. They think that I look like every white person they have ever seen in person <laughs> or on television. They'll be like, are you related to Mr. Rothblatt, our math teacher next door? You look like you could be brothers. Oh, Mr. Rothblatt, you mean the 64-year-old short Jewish balding man with a beard? <laughs> yeah, we're fucking twins. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of celebrity look-alike, some of them, you know, complimentary, like, you look like Tony Hawk. I'm like, all right, cool, you know, famous skateboarder. You look like House. <laughs> yep, I do, I do look like House, I got that. Because of that, I was actually housed three years in a row for Halloween, so thank you, sixth grade class at Emerson Middle School. Thank you very much. Some of them aren't very complimentary. I've gotten many times. You look like Stuart from Mad TV. For those of you who don't know Stuart from Mad TV, it's an overgrown man playing a character of a hyperactive eight-year-old and semi-retarded eight-year-old, yes. One time, years ago, I got... <laughs> it was like... Wait, you look like that actor who come out in Halloween H2O. That was a sequel to Halloween that came out a while ago. I was like, oh, I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, um, it was also in uh, Freaky Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis? <laughs> yeah, you look like Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> from Activity. <laughs> That was my favorite. <laughs> I have to sub, I have to cover a lot of uh, special ed classes sometimes. And as a sub, that's really hard because you're thrown into a situation you don't know these kids' history. Like there's kids who are ADD, ADHD, autism, Asperger's, hyperactive, you know, mental disorders, physical ailments, Down syndrome, and some are just fucking stupid. Like I don't, <laughs> and I don't know, so I have to kind of just make it up. The name Asperger's for that disease, by the way, can we? I feel like we should come up with a better name than Asperger's. Because it's a serious, like kids who have Asperger's have trouble relating to others in social situations, are closed off, are kind of isolated. I don't think the name Asperger's is helping. <laughs> to tell people I have Asperger's. I actually did a little research, Asperger's was discovered by a man named Hans Asperger, who was a scientist in 20th century Austria, who actually had the symptoms of fucking Asperger's. He was isolated, couldn't relate to other kids. Again, I don't think the name helped in that situation. <laughs> you just picture little Hans walking to school in 20th century Austria like, oh, it's so great being in Austria. <laughs> the hills are so alive, I love it so much. Oh, scheiße, that's Gunther and Wolf. <laughs> so always make fun of me. Don't look at them. Keep walking. <laughs> hey, Gunther! There's Asperger! <laughs> hey, Asperger! You want fries with your Asperger? <laughs> oh, that's good, Rolf. That's good. Yeah, how do you want your Asperger cooked? Medium will kick your Asperger. The dude. the dude didn't have a chance. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> I, uh, my mom, I'm I'm single at the moment, and uh, my my mom really wants grandkids, like really badly. <laughs> Everyone she knows has a grandkid, Oliver. 
Family has grandkids. I have two older brothers, by the way. <laughs> they, don't have gra- they don't have kids. So we're just fucking a huge disappointment. <laughs> My mom used to kind of just say, meet a nice girl, marry her, and have a kid. And now I think she'd be very okay with me meeting a suspect girl, date raping her, and kidnapping the baby. (laughs) But I'm trying, I've dated, I've dated, I've dated a lot of girls. I've dated, I dated for a while, I dated younger girls, like 23, 24 for a while. That was a, that was good, I mean. (laughs) No, it's good because 23, 24, they're not jaded yet. And what I mean by jaded, I mean is they're not sick of dating comedians. So that's... <laughs> and uh, dated, you know, older women too. And that's great, because they're... But m- sometimes I, I get scared that they're a little too ready to settle down, like too ready to have kids. Like they'll tell you, no, no, everything's great. I don't want to change anything. Like it's just the way it is. <laughs> but then one night you might wake up in the middle of the night and see you're sitting at the end of the bed, this naked Indian style, to be like, I raped you in your sleep. I think it worked. I can feel life inside of me. Uh, I don't know. That's maybe that's just my. <laughs> that's my fear of commitment manifesting itself. <laughs> <coughs> no, but you know, all all of us have been talking. <laughs> all of us have been talking about getting older. Like Matt's like, I'm 32. This guy's like 28. I'm 33. I feel like there's an old guy in the back being like, I fucking hate you, kids. But no, <laughs> getting a little bit older, 33, and like I am feeling it, you know, with the na- actual things of like muscles and all that shit. <laughs> Whatever. It's true. I, I hurt my neck the other day because somebody literally just asked me a question. I was like, what? Ow! Come on! <laughs> Don't do that! I'm in my 30s. <laughs> Don't ask me a question. But like, and also, I can't drink like I used to. I mean, don't get me wrong, I try. (laughs) But I just, I get just so tired. (laughs) Like, I used to be able to stay up in my 20s for fucking no reason with guys, with my guy friends, and just talk about shit till 5 (laughs) a.m. My roommates and friends and I used to, like, years ago, we used to come home from the bars and watch episodes, we would watch scenes from The Insider till 4 a.m., just like, look at that! That's acting! (laughs) That is acting! Look at his face! (laughs) And that would end in like, start in fake wrestling, then like real wrestling. (laughs) And a broken lamp. But now it's just like, I get so tired. And like, I will, I'll try, I'll fight it. If there's a girl or something, I will. I will, you know, I'll get through it. (laughs) But generally, even then, if it's between getting a girl's number or going home to my fucking sealy bed and Tempur-Pedic pillows, nine times out of ten, my bed's going to win. <laughs> I love my pillow so much. <laughs> oh, my God. I have two pem- Tempur-Pedic pillows and two regular pillows, and it, every night it's like a pillow party. I have one in here. I put one in between my legs. I sleep on the other, and the other ones are just closed in s- case something happens. Like, I just... <laughs> oh, God. I love them so much. <laughs> it's like it's like my vibrator. That's what it is. But like in a clean. I mean, I fuck it. It's, an, it's I fuck my pillows, but it's more it's more clean. And even if a girl, if I do bring a girl over, like I won't forget about my pillows. Like the girl will be here, and I'll just be, I'll finger my pillows. I will just keep them. I'll look at my pillows. And be like I love you. I love you. I'm not forgetting about you. Oh man. I love it. I don't know. <laughs> but like 33, when my dad was 33, he had done a lot more than I have. <laughs> Let's put it that way. The time my dad was 33, he had served in a war. He'd been nar- married nine years, had three beautiful children. <laughs> and a career, lived in a nice house at the end of a dead end street. I have. <laughs> served in a restaurant. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I have three, ru- I have two roommates. 
live in a kind of run-down, rent-controlled apartment. <laughs> my career is at a dead end, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> so there's similarities. <laughs> no, but I don't know. I think about that as I get older. Like, what am I going to tell my grandkids? If I have grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, you know, our... Speaking of, like, our grandparents' generation, they were the greatest generation. Like, everything they did just seemed fucking awesome. Everything. Everything was so classy and romantic and just so well, even well said. Like, how a grandfather tells his grandson how he met his spouse. It's always just so classic. Like, <laughs> come here, Timmy. <laughs> it's about time you learned how I met your grandmother. <clears throat> it was sometime after the war, and... Well, a few of the fellas and I had gone to that new gin joint called Swingin' Sammy's. <laughs> we had been through a lot together. So the boys and I were just about to toast our gin martinis when there I saw her. <laughs> Across the bar, the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. With hair as red as a California sunset. And with a face that would make, well, that would make even Rita Hayworth blush. I knew right then I had to marry her, so that summer we were married, and 60 years later, I'm more in love with her than I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, clap to that, because that's a story. That is awesome. I'm very nervous what I'm going to tell my grandkids. It's going to be more like, come here, Timmy. For the purposes of the joke, we all talk like that when we get older. <clears throat> it's about time uh, you learned how I met your grandmother. We were in Vegas at my buddy Steve's bachelor party. A few of the fellas and I had just finished blowing lines of cocaine off the two lady dancers we just invited to our room to perform various acts of cunnilingus and mutual penetration. We had been through a lot together. So the fellas and I decided to go to that new club on the strip called Hot and Wet Pussy. When we got there, Akon was blasting through the speakers. We were toasting our Jaeger bomb shots when there I saw her. The sluttiest bitch I'd ever seen. Dressed as whorish as a VH1 reality star and with tits as fake as... Your robot brother, Edward. Your brother's a robot, Timmy. <laughs> it's about time you knew that. The technology was there years ago, and we replaced him. <laughs> Anyways, I realized that I had to make her my wife, so that summer we were married, and five years later, I found out she was fucking my buddy Steve, and she left me and took me for everything I had. That's why we're in the desert, Timmy, in this trailer... In this post apocalyptic desert. But thank God you can still shop at Hot Topics in Aeropostale just down the street. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. I'm out of America. You guys are awesome.